Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be discussing coplanar circles and common tangents. So when we're discussing these different types of circles, coplanar circles are ones that are two circles in the same plane. So when it comes to circles in the same plane, they kind of have a couple options. They can either intersect at two points, intersect at one point, or intersect at no points. Coplanar circles that intersect at one point are called tangent circles, and coplanar circles that have a common center we call concentric circles. So what that's talking about is up in our image here, if they cross at exactly one place, so that's going to be like this one in the middle here, tangent circle here, because they only cross in one place, which is this spot right here, and these ones are also considered tangent circles because they cross at exactly one spot. So do you see how they look different, but they still only have that one property? The other type that we mentioned are ones called concentric circles, which is like this one at the bottom, concentric. And these concentric circles are circles that are kind of nested into one another. They have that same center, but their radii vary. So when it comes to these different types, of circles, what we've learned is that their tangents with these two coplanar circles, they actually have something called a common tangent. A common tangent is a tangent line that actually is tangent to both circles at the same time. And so what we want to do is kind of explore where these common tangents come into play. So this first example here, we've got two circles that overlap in two places. So they have two points of intersection. When we have a cir two circles that overlap in two places, what happens is we get two common tangents. The reason why we only get two is because, let's take a look here. Remember, a tangent can only touch a circle once and it can only touch it on the outside. So that means I can't have anything that goes through the middle here between these two circles. My only options are going to be a circle or is going to be a tangent that touches right here and a tangent that touches right here. Now you may be asking yourselves, these don't really look like tangents, but if I go and expand them out a little bit, we can see, not move them, expand them, we can see how those circles there are expanded and it kind of follows that tangent tendency that it only touches in one place, but it's a line that goes on forever. But notice there how they can only cross in two places because any other place that we try to draw a line, say I tried to draw one, that was tangent here, it go, it's a secant to that other one, or if we try to draw one here, it becomes a secant to the other one. So the only places are on the outside of those. So when they have two common intersections, we only get two tangents. Now, what happens when they have one common intersection? Well, it depends on the type of relationship that those circles have. When it comes to tangent circles, we either can get three common tangents, or we can only get one common tangent. The reason why is it depends on the type of tangent and the location of it. So in this first one where the circles have a common tangent but they're not inside of one another, we've got three places that we can put our tangents. We can actually put a tangent in between the two circles, which comes through right here. And then just like we did before, we can put a tangent on the outside of our circles here, where we get one right here that goes on forever. And we get one right here that'll go on forever. And we can see that as we expand out both those lines, just like we did before, that we have these tangent lines. But notice how we didn't just have one tangent, but we ended up with three. Now, how is that different than this other tangent circle? Well, just like before, when we have circles that overlap at all, we can't go through either of the circles. So in this case, there's only one place for that tangent to exist, and that tangent line in this case is going to be right through that point of intersection. We can't put that line anywhere else because anywhere else that we put that line, it's gonna go through one of the circles at least twice. So when we have tangent circles that don't overlap, so there's no overlap, it's not inside of one another, then we end up getting three tangents. But if I have a tangent circle that is inscribed or put inside of the other one, then we only get one tangent, and that's going to be at that point of tangency. Okay, so we can kind of see that difference there. The last ones that we're going to talk about are these circles that have no overlap or no points of intersection, and it depends on the circle. So like we said before, with those tangent circles, we can see that when they are, there's no overlap between the circles, that we get three tangents. We can create that one in the middle and the two on the outsides. 
If there is the overlap, then we can only create one circle because any other line that we draw will go through in more than one place. The same thing happens here with no common pieces. So let's take a look at that concentric circle at the bottom. With that one, regardless of where I draw the tangent, it either only is tangent to one line, but any line tangent to that one in the middle is always going to go through the outside circle more than once. So because it goes through our outside circle more than once, what that means is we actually cannot draw any common tangents between these two circles. So there are no common tangents between these two circles. Now, how is that different than these non-overlapping, these non-intersecting circles that we have before? Well, think of those other ones on the top. That one, that tangent circle on the top that were, had one point of intersection, those ones we could actually overlap in between. So we can also get that in between overlap here with these circles. I can get a tangent line that runs right here and I can get a tangent line that runs right here. And so as we expand out those lines just like we did before, you can see that we end up with a tangent that goes between them here and a tangent that goes between them here. Beautiful. And then we have our other tangent that actually is on the outside just like we had before. So we can take this tangent that goes to the outside here and this tangent that goes on the outside here. And as we expand out those two tangents that we have there, lengthen them longer, you can see that this one doesn't end up with just one tangent or two tangents or even three, but when they are non-intersecting circles, we actually can draw four, tan four common tangents between them. We can get two in the middle and two on the outside. So what I wanna do is just briefly talk about how many con common tangents these circle have and then draw them. We're gonna use blue to indicate external and red to indicate internal tangents. So internal tangents are just tangents between two circles. External tangents are ones that are on the outside of circles. So based on the way these look, we can actually determine how many tangents they're going to have. So when we have two circles that have no intersecting points, those two circles we know are going to have four tangents. We just need to draw them. As we saw before, those four tangents have two internal and two external. This one in the middle here is going to have three tangents. It's going to have one internal one that's going to be between the two circles and then two on the outside. And our one with two intersecting points is only gonna have two tangents and both of those tangents are going to be external tangents. So let's take a look at what these tangents will look like. They're gonna be very similar to the ones that we had on that previous page there. So using our red here, we can get an internal tangent that goes right here. Maybe if I can draw a tangent line. Okay, so we've got this tangent that goes through right here. We've got a, another internal tangent that's going to come in to play right here. Let's expand out that one so that we can see. Okay, so we have those two internal tangents, and then we're going to have our external tangent. So that external tangent is going to be this blue one here that runs on the outside of both our circles. Beautiful. That one was nice and easy to make because it was pretty straight. And then we have our other external tangent, which is going to run this way. So just like before, there we go. And there are those four tangents. Now, as we mentioned previously, when there are two circles that have one intersecting point between the two circles and one circle is not inside of the other, then we have three tangents. Our internal tangent is going to be right in between the two two through that point of intersection. That'll be that point of tangency. And then we end up with our last two tangent lines that'll be on the outside. So we've got one that runs right here and we've got one that runs right here. Beautiful. Okay, then our last one has those ones with two intersection points. And as we talked about previously, that will only have two on the outside here. So we'll have one that runs right here and one that runs right here. Awesome. So that is how we can find those tangent lines, approximate them, determine how many tangents there's even going to be between two coplanar circles. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, check out the next video in which we discuss how we can determine whether or not a line is actually a tangent line.